Hello, today we are going to talk about the skeleton of the lower limb. The skeleton of the lower limb is divided into the pelvic girdle and the skeleton of the leg and of the foot. The pelvic girdle is formed by two pelvic bones, which behind the back are almost motionlessly jointed with the sacrum and in front with each other. The pelvic bone, os coxa, in an adult consists of three meated bones, iliac bone, os ilium, sciatic bone, os ischi, pubic bone, os pubis. Bodies of the bones are jointed in the acetabulum, which is located on the outer surface of the pelvic bone. The acetabulum serves to connect the femoral head to the pelvic bone. It is distinguished into the central part, fossa acetabuli, and the periphery, where lunar surface, facies lunatum acetabuli, is located. There is a notch in caesura acetabuli, in the lower part of the acetabulum. The ilium, os ilium, consists of the body, corpus osis ilium, and the wing, alia osis ili. The upper flattened part of the wing is called the crest, crista iliaca. Along it stretch three parallel lines, for muscle attachment. The outer lip, labium externum, the inner lip, labium internum, and the intermediate line, linea intermedia, which is located between them. From the front and from behind, crest ends with protuberances. There are the upper and the lower front iliac spines at the front end. And there are the upper and the lower back iliac spines at the back end. On the outer surface of the wing there are weakly expressed rough lines on which the gluteal muscles begin. The anterior gluteal line, linea glutea anterior, is the longest one. It begins near the superior anterior iliac spine and arches towards the large sciatic notch. The posterior gluteal line, linea glutea posterior, is located from behind of the wing and it is vertical. Lower gluteal line, linea glutea inferior, is located above the acetabulum. The inner surface of the wing is slightly curved and forms the iliac pit, fossa iliaca. The lower boundary of the fossa is the arched line. Linea arcuata. Behind the iliac fossa is the auricular surface, facies auricularis, for articulation with the sacrum. Above the auricular surface is located iliac protuberance, tuberositas iliaca, for interosseous ligaments attachment. The sciatic bone, os ischi has a thickened body, which in front passes into the branch of the ischium, ramus osis ischi. The branch connects to the lower branch of the pubic bone, delimits the obturator foramen, foramen obturatum. At the junction of the body with the branch is the sciatic tuber, tuber ischiaticum. There is a sciatic spine, spina ischiatica, above. This spine separates the large and small sciatic notches in caesura ischiatica major et minor. Pubic bone, os pubis. It consists of a body and two branches, the upper and lower, ramus superior et inferior osis pubis, which limit the obturator foramen. The body of the pubic bone forms the anterior section of the acetabulum and directly passes into the upper branch. The upper edge is pointed and is called the crest of the pubic bone, pecten osis pubis. In front, the crest ends with the pubic tubicle, tuberculum pubis. 
the anterior part of the upper branch passes into the lower branch, on the medial surface of which there is a symphysial surface, fascia symphysialis. It is involved in the formation of pubic symphysis. On the inner surface of the pelvic bone, at the site of fusion of the iliac and pubic bones, there is an iliopubic eminence, eminencia iliopubica. The femur. It has a body and proximal and distal epiphysis. The proximal epiphysis is represented by a spherical head, caput osseus femoris, and the neck, column osseus femoris. The head is directed medially. There is a small pit on its surface, fovea capitis osseus femoris. It is the place of attachment of the ligament. At the junction of the neck into the body there are two rough processes, the greater and lesser trochanters, trochanter meyer and trochanter minor. The greater trochanter is located at the top and laterally. On its medial surface there is a trochanteric pit, fossa trochanterica. The lesser trochanter is located below the greater trochanter and medially. In front, both trochanters are connected by an intertrochanteric line, linea intertrochanterica. Behind, intertrochanteric crest, crista intertrochanterica. On the back surface of the femur, there is a rough line, linea aspira, which is divided into lateral and medial lips, labium laterale et labium mediale. Above and below, the lips diverge. Above, the lateral lip widens, thickens and forms the gluteal tuberosity, tuberositas glutea. The medial lip continues into the crest line, linea pectinea. Near the distal epiphysis, the lips diverge and limit the popliteal surface, facies poplitae. The distal epiphysis is represented by the lateral and medial condyles, separated by an intercondylar pit, fossa intercondylaris. On the side above the articular surfaces of each condyle, small tubercles of the epicondyle are located, the epicondylus lateralis et medialis. In front, the articular surface of the condyle pass into each other forming a patellar surface, facies patellaris. Patella. It is a large sesamate bone that is enclosed in the tendon of the quadriceps of the femur. We can see the base of the patella, basis patella, upward. There is top of the patella, apex patella, downward. This bone has a front surface, facies anterior, and an internal articular surface, facies articularis. Shin bones are represented by the tibia and the fibula. The first is in the medial position, the second is located along the lateral edge of the shin. There is the interosseous space of the shin, spatium interosseum cruris, between the bones. Fibula is a thin bone. At its proximal epiphysis we can see a head of the fibula, caput fibula, with a pointed top, apex fibula. On the inside of the head there is an articular surface for articulation with the tibia. On the body there are anterior margin, posterior margin and the most acute interosseous margin, which is located medially. The distal epiphysis is called the lateral ankle, malleolus lateralis. The inner side contains a smooth articular surface located in the sagittal plane. There is a pit, fossa malleolus lateralis, behind the articular surface 
to which the tendon of the muscle attach. Tibia. It has a proximal and distal epiphysis and body. On the proximal epiphysis we can see the lateral and medial condyles. The articular surface of the condyle is turned upward and articulates with the condyles of the femur. Between the articular surfaces of the condyle, an intercondylar eminence is located, eminencia intercondylaris, which consists of lateral and medial tubercles. From the front and from behind of the intercondylar eminence, uh, there are front and back intercondylar areas, area intercondylaris anterior and posterior. Below the lateral condyle, on the lateral side, we can see a fibular articular surface, facies articularis fibularis. In the body of the tibia, we distinguish an acute margin, marga anterior, which at the top thickens and forms a tuberosity of the tibia, tuberositas tibia. The quadriceps of the femur is attached to it. The lateral margin is turned towards the fibula and is called interosseous. The medial margin is rounded. Three surfaces are distinguished in the body of this bone. There is a rough line of the soleus muscle, linea musculi soli, on the back surface. The distal epiphysis of the tibia is expanded. On its lateral margin there is a fibular notch. In caesura fibularis. There is a medial ankle, malleolus medialis, on the medial side. On its lateral side, we can see the articular surface, which at an angle passes into the lower articular surface of the tibia. These surfaces, together with the articular surface of the fibula, articulate with the tarsus of the talus. Bones of the foot, ossa pedis. They are divided into three departments, tarsus, metatarsus, and phalanx of the fingers. The skeleton of the tarsus includes seven bones. Two rows are distinguished in it, the proximal row and the distal row. The proximal row consists of the talus and calcaneus bones. The distal section consists of three sphenoid bones and a cuboid bone. Between these rows is a scaphoid bone. The talus has a head, a neck and a body. The protruding part of the body with three protruding articular surfaces is called block. The upper of these surfaces serves to articulate the tibia. Two lateral surfaces are ankles. On this side of the lateral ankle surface there is a lateral process, processus lateralis talia. Behind the block, the posterior process, processus posterior talia, departs from the body of the talus. Metatarsus consists of five short tubular bones, which have body, head and base. Skeleton of the toes is similar to the skeleton of the fingers. The skeleton of the big toe has only two phalanx, the proximal and the distal. The rest of the toes have three phalanx. This video was made by students Tritikova Julia and Pankov Stanislav, General Medicine 224. Thanks for your attention. We hope you enjoyed this video. Goodbye!